Hello, welcome. I'm the crazy hat chemist, I'm Mr. Montbriand, and today we're going to be talking about chemical nomenclature. This is the first video in a series of four. This first video, we're going to be talking about binary covalent compounds. The second video, we'll be talking about ionic compounds. And the third video, we'll be talking about acid nomenclature. The fourth video will be a mixture of binary ionic and acid nomenclature all mixed up into one. That's why we call it mixed practice. So let's begin today with chemical nomenclature of binary covalent compounds. So here we go. So a binary covalent compounds is when you have two non-metals. But we're not going to include hydrogen in this. So it's everything on the left-hand side of that staircase of the periodic table. So two non-metals combined together. You're going to write the least electronegative element first. The most electric negative element, recalling, that would be fluorine. So you're going to have the least electronegative element written first, and that element would be the furthest from fluorine. You're going to specify the number of atoms by Greek prefixes. Mono is going to be dropped for the first element, and we're going to get into more of that in just a little bit here. The prefixes that we're going to use, I'm going to let you know in just a second, but this is the only time of which there's no charge to the compound, is when you have two nonmetals. And when we talk about ionic compounds, that will make sense, because with binary covalent compounds, we're not putting two elements together with a charge ratio such that it equals zero. So we're going to use prefixes instead, so you have to know your prefixes. Here are your prefixes. The prefix for one is mono. The prefix for two is di. The prefix for three is tri, like tricycle. The prefix for four is tetra, like tetrahedral or tetris. And then thereafter, the rest of the prefixes are by uh, the geometric shapes. So like penta for five, and that's like a pentagon. Six is hexa for like a hexagon. Seven is hepta for heptagon. And eight is octa for an octagon, like an octopus. And non, nine is nana. And ten is deca. I don't think you'll have to go beyond that, so you'll just have to remember those first ten. Mono, di, tri, tetra, pencha, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. So a quick little note, and that is the there will be a suffix on the last element, and that suffix will be IDE. It will be an IDE ending, so remember that as well. There's a little bit of spelling issue, and for simplicity, for pronunciation, we're going to, the if there is an A or an O of the prefix, that will be dropped um, if the element begins with a vowel, and I'll go over that in just a second. So let's start off with some practice examples. So here we go. So for number one, you see that you have two nonmetals together. That's a carbon and an oxygen. The least electronegative element is written first. That's why it's the carbon and not the oxygen. Oxygen is closer to fluorine. That's why it's the second element. So how many carbons do you have in number one? You have one carbon, but we don't write a prefix if there's only one. So we're just going to call it carbon. The second element is oxygen, and there is only one oxygen. So we have to use a prefix on the second one all the time. And so it's going to be carbon mon oxide. And here is when we chop off the mon o, the o on the mono, we chop that off because we don't have two vowels together, because the oxide begins with a vowel. You notice that there's an IDE ending on the second element as well, so that's why we get carbon monoxide. Let's try number two. Number two, we have a carbon that's written first, that's the least electronegative element, and then we have an oxygen that's written second, that's the most electronegative element. Again, in number two, we have only a single carbon, so we don't write a prefix for that. But there is um, more than one oxygen on the second element. So we've got to figure out what the prefix is for uh, oxygen for number for two of them. So the prefix for two is di. So it's going to be carbon dioxide. Notice that the ID ending is there again as well. Carbon dioxide. 
Let's try number three. Number three, we have a nitrogen, we have an oxygen. The least electronegative element is written first. That is the nitrogen, which is furthest from fluorine on the periodic table. Now we have two nitrogens. So since we don't have one, we're going to have to write a prefix for two. And the prefix for two is a di. And then the second element is oxygen. And there are four oxygens. So we have to remember what the prefix for four is, and that's a tetra. Okay, and that also ends in an A, so we're going to get rid of that A, and we're going to have, uh, for on the tetra part, we're going to get rid of the A because oxygen begins with a vowel. So let's try this as di-nitrogen tetroxide. So here's that. Notice that there's, again, an ID ending on the second element. All right, let's try number four. Number four. We have two nonmetals combined together, and that is a nitrogen. And that element is furthest from fluorine. It's the least electronegative. That's why it's written first. And there are two nitrogens. So we're going to write the prefix for two. That's a di. So it's going to be di-nitrogen. And then the second element is oxygen. There's only one oxygen, and we have to use a prefix on the second element all the time. And that prefix for one is mono. Remember, again, that oxygen begins with a vowel, so we're going to chop off the O on the mono part. And the second element, the oxygen, is going to have an IDE, an IDE ending. So that will be di-nitrogen monoxide. Di-nitrogen monoxide. Awesome. So let's try number five. So you have a phosphorus and a chlorine. The least electronegative is written first. That is the one that's furthest from fluorine. That's why the phosphorus is written first, and then the chlorine is written second. So how many phosphorus do you have? One. Okay, But you don't write a prefix when you have only one. Um, the second element is chlorine, and you have three of them. And you always use a prefix on the second element, and you have three chlorines, and that's a tri. So it's going to be phosphorus trichloride. Phosphorus trichloride. All right, awesome. So now that we've gone from the formula to the name, now we're going to go in the reverse direction, and we're going to go from the name to the formula. This is hopefully just as easy. So the, set, the, the first one in this series is number six, and that is dinitrogen pentoxide. Di is for two, and then so the... Uh, the first element is nitrogen. How many nitrogens? Di, that's two of them. So you're going to write an N, and you're going to write a subscript 2. And then the second element is oxygen, because you have the oxy, the oxide portion of that. So you're going to write an O. And how many oxygens do you have? You have penta, which is for 5. So it's N2O5. N2O5. Number seven, the second in this series here, is carbon tetrachloride. So carbon, there's only one carbon because you don't have a prefix in front of the carbon, and it's assumed to be one, so you're just going to have a single carbon. The second element is a chlorine. And how many chlorines do you have? Tetra. So what is uh, the prefix tetra represents four, so you're going to have one carbon and four chlorines. So that's CCl4, carbon tetrachloride. All right, let's go for number eight. And number eight, we have phosphorus and um, sulfide. So it's triphosphorus heptasulfide. So there's a tri that represents three, and it's phosphorus, so you have three phosphorus. And sulfide, you have a hepta. So we've got to figure out what hepta is. Hopefully you remember what hepta. There's a hexa and a hepta. Hexa is for six, hepta is for seven. So you're going to have seven sulfurs. So it's a P3S7. Hopefully that's okay. All right. The next one is sulfur dioxide. And so you have sulfur. You don't have a mono in front because that's assumed that you only have one. So you have just a single sulfur. And then it's an oxygen after that because it's an oxide. And how many oxygens do you have? You have di. And the prefix di means two. And so that is SO2, sulfur dioxide. Fantastic. Hopefully everybody's okay with that so far. All right, so this is the first of the series of videos. And I am the crazy hat chemist, so... Of course, I'm wearing a crazy hat. 
So I hope that you are looking forward to looking at the second video in this series, and that will be talking about ionic compounds. So we just finished up binary covalent compounds. We'll talk about ionic compounds in the second video. So look for that next time. See you then.